What a look at. Holy. Oh, he's jumping, he's jumping. Oh, come on. The sharks will be after him. Hello. I think I've done it, guys. Look at this. Ah. Uh, might be a bigger one in here, though. Oy. You beautiful thing. Oh, yes. G'day guys, welcome back. Now the next few days we're doing a survival challenge recreating one of the worst moments of my life. So a couple of years ago, Fran and I, uh, we went on a four month trip camping up the east coast of Australia, but about halfway into that trip, we lost the boat. Our worst nightmare happened. We'd gone ashore on an island and we were hunting in the shallows. Basically, we come back down and the boat was adrift. Shit, Todd's got the boat and off and sailing. I made a decision to jump in and go after the boat and the next few hours was the hardest thing I'd ever done up to that point. And I've often thought, what would have happened if we didn't get the boat that day? So I'm gonna recreate that exact situation with the exact same things we had on shore and we've just lost the boat. This is what I had that day. I had a pair of reef shoes that I quickly threw on the ground, a shirt, a hat. We had a hand spear. Basically, we were just going ashore for an hour or two trying to get a feed and I'll show you what I've got in here. So on that day, we just finished all of our water before the incident took place. But this might come in handy later. We've got a bit of zinc, a GoPro, a second GoPro, and a couple of spare GoPro batteries. That's it guys, this is a day I really never wanted to recreate, but let's start this survival challenge. And it was about at this moment, I was like, oh shit. And there was a moment of realization where while we've been camping on the islands for a couple of weeks now, you take away a few key items, you take away food, you take away water, take away shelter, take away the ability for fire, and all of a sudden it turns from a fun camping trip into like a real life survival situation. And that's what we were faced with that day. So let's see how we go. First things first, I'm gonna go for a bit of a walk along the tide line here and just see if there's anything, uh, anything useful washed in. Probably wouldn't take my chances with that. No. Nah. Thankfully, if you find yourself in a survival situation, there's all sorts of stuff that gets washed in on the tide line. We'll see what we can come up with here. So maybe. Starting fire is gonna be one of the, the biggest challenges we've got here. Something like this could come in handy later. No. Oh yeah. A rusty old light bulb. It's amazing how many of these you find intact on the beach. This could come in handy later. Now on that day, we'd been up in the mangroves using a hand spear to catch some fish. It was, it was probably one of the fishiest areas I've ever seen. There was huge big fish caught in the mangroves and we were able to get a couple of uh, really nice mangrove jacks that day. But um, this spear is, is now a lot blunter than it once was but hopefully it could come in handy. The other thing I did have that day was a small knife. So I do have a small knife and a hand spear. Let's see what we can do. While the tide's low, I'm just seeing if there's any fish cruising along here. And I'm also looking for pippies. So once that wave comes in, just going like that. And if there is any pippies here, they should reveal themselves when you dig them up like that. But this all looks a bit too, um, too rocky. There's too much coral in here, I think. We'll keep pressing on. No doubt the most important thing we get our hands on is some water. So in conditions like this, you'll be able to survive for two weeks without food. Uh, it wouldn't be pleasant, but you can do it. Whereas you can only last two days without water. So uh, we're gonna be keeping our eyes out for hydration, definitely. There's a heap of coconut trees here, but none of these ones have nuts on them. Nothing. Guys, there's three bone fish that have just coming up and their bodies are almost out of the water here. I need to get one of these fish, hey. They seem to be coming in with the waves. They've gone, that might've been my chance. I need to put a head mount on so I can just bloody go for them next time. my chance i don't think i'll get a better chance than that definitely spook that fish but i'll give it a couple more minutes see if there's any more i don't want to spend too long out in the middle of the sun like using all this energy now but if we can opportunistically get a feed then we can go concentrate on something else like building a shelter and oh there's another one up here actually there's another one coming this way I just hesitated and he spooked. Bugger. Because the tide's so low, where these bonefish are normally feeding, 
is actually almost out of the water at the moment. And as the waves are lapping, it's stirring all the worms and, the, and that type of thing up that the bonefish are eating. So I think I've only got like a small window of opportunity here, maybe 20, 30 minutes while the tide's low. And then I think I'm gonna miss my chance. Let's have another crack. I can't believe that, that was a big one. That was a really nice eating size one. I'm feeling the pressure a little bit because I know I've only got such a small window here until these bonefish bugger off and they seem to be getting a little bit more spooked. So I'm gonna give it one more shot. This time around, I've actually got one major advantage over what I did a couple of years ago when the incident took place. This morning, I've had my AG1s. While on that trip, we were pretty much solely relying on the ocean and the land. So. We were having a fair bit of luck catching seafood and the protein side of things, but the reality of it, when it comes to relying on bush tucker, there's not always that much around. As time went on, our diet was really suffering. And actually a fair few of you guys actually noticed and commented in that, you know, our energy had just like really plummeted. We were starting to fatigue a lot. Uh, a few of you are actually concerned we might have scurvy by this point in time. Uh, and that's when the recommendations came in that we try AG1 and we looked into it once we got back on the mainland. I'm actually such a big fan of it. The entire Strickland family received Athletic Greens for Christmas. So I'm a big believer in it. From what I've noticed personally, my energy and endurance last throughout the entire day, which is a massive one for us out here when we don't really know like when our next meal's coming from. You know, if you have this in the morning, you're really set for the day. The other big thing for me is it helps boost the immune system. While you're out in these remote areas, you just can't have anything getting infected and like your immune system is a real key. So if you want to give yourself a little bit of a head start, if you're out here doing a survival challenge or you're doing the long form camping trips or just in your day to day life, then now is literally the best time to start because Athletic Greens are once again putting on a bit of a special offer. There's a 60 day money back guarantee so you can try now, see if you like it, see if it's for you. Um, as well as all B2B viewers that use the code in the description, you're gonna get five free travel packs plus a year's supply of vitamin D3 plus K2. The link is in the description, guys. Let me know how you go with it. Haven't had another one come past for a little while. I think I've actually missed my chance. So we're gonna keep pressing on down the beach and see if we can find somewhere to get out of the sun for a little bit. Bit of shade and bit of hydration. It's all just been really dense coconut trees, but it looks like there's a bit of a cutting here. This could be a spot to set up shelter. Bit of shade anyway, a bit of respite from the sun. Yeah, this is pretty good in here. This is, this is actually paradise. I might set up a bit of a shelter here and then I can sort of watch any fish coming past and hopefully I can get them with a hand spear. The objective now, see if we can find something to drink. A couple of green coconuts up here. They might be the go, I'll see if I can get up this tree. This place does look a lot like paradise, but without like water, food and shelter and fire, it's gonna be pretty challenging I reckon to to get set up here properly. Oh yes. This is what I was looking for. Might be able to just twist him off. Yeah, awesome. All right, we'll sit in the shade here, have a bit of a drink, and if any bonefish swim past, that's what we'll be going after. And just cause how hot it is, I think we're gonna have to be going through like, like a coconut every two hours or so just to stay hydrated. There we go, look at that. Beautiful little drinking hole. Oh, this is gonna be good. Mm -mm. That's really nice. We're actually gonna need a heap of hydration, so I'll, I'll uh, get up and get these coconuts and bring them back to where we'll set up base camp up here. Oh, I'm so bummed we missed our chance with the bonefish. I haven't seen another one. Well, since I missed them, really. Bugger. I'm not sure what we're gonna do for food now. Oh, maybe I'll be able to spot the bonefish from up here. Oh, this place. What a lookout. This is beautiful. Oh, right, let's get some coconuts and get down from here. Oh, yeah. That's enough. I haven't quite given up hope yet on the bonefish. I've put a bit of bait in the shallows there and I'll keep a, an eye on it while I'm trying to build a shelter. And if any bonefish come in, I'll, uh, I'll run down and see if I can take my chance. Oh, clear a bit of an area here. 
bit of roll-on deodorant. <laughs> Some of these coconuts will actually be good to eat. They are challenging to get into without a decent machete, but we'll get to that later. Just want to clear a bit of an area here and then set up our structure. All right, for the shelter, I'm going to do a super simple one because basically I don't want to waste too much time and too much energy. What we're going to do, one vertical pole here. Just dig him out a bit. That should do him. Compact that down. We'll go the other vertical member here. All right. Fill him back in. Got some green palm fronds. Finally a long piece. This can be the cross member of our little shelter. Oh man, I've got to get out of the sun. This is what we'll use as rope to tie down stuff. Oh, let's get our cross member on. Oh, it might not be cyclone proof, but that's literally all we're gonna need is a bit of a um, bit of structure anyway. And then we'll put the palm fronds on. Gonna need a couple of more green fronds. These ones here look nice. Oh, I hope I don't step on a centipede. Gee, that's a big one, but I think this one's gonna do it. All right, now there's a whole different number of shelters you could make here with palm frond weaving, all that type of thing, but, but literally with this survival challenge, um, we just wanna do something quick, easy, that gives us a bit of shelter, like this is literally gonna do. And then we gotta get on to more important things, like at some point here, we gotta find food, and we also gotta get a fire started. Toothbrush. This is where we'll try to get a fire started. Should be able to keep mosquitoes and that type of thing off us tonight. Bit of a windbreak. We're getting there, we're getting there. Things are starting to come together, guys. To get a, a fire going is something that I have actually been dreading, but I think now being the middle of the day is probably our best chance. It's when it's the hottest, the sun's overhead. So let's go see if we can find like the exact right materials. This stuff's a good start. We really need like the best, driest materials. Let's go for a walk. We need a really dry coconut. Something like this, like really dry and really scraggly. This is another little light bulb I found, but this is actually gonna be better because I'm gonna be able to fill it with water. I'm gonna put a shirt on so I don't cook myself in the meantime because it, it is getting seriously hot here at the moment. Oh no. Is that sealed up, is it? So I need to try crack this little bit here to allow this bulb to fill with water. Oh, I got it. I think this will now be able to fill with water. I saw some bubbles coming out. Oh yes, I think it's working. We're getting a little bit of water in there. Hopefully this will work. We need that direct sunlight though. We need the sun to come out sort of behind a cloud at the moment. Now to give ourselves any chance with this, we need to get all the materials absolutely perfect. So we're gonna try and start a fire down there in the sun and then transfer the ember up here to the main fire. Just gotta get it all ready. So we're gonna put our most flammable materials here. So this really, really dry husk, just get what we can out of that. This here's the driest, best tinder we can get. We want direct sunlight, but no wind. So let's try here. So the magic here is sun is going through this concave lens and water magnifying it and hitting a point where my tinder is. That is gonna hopefully cause enough heat for this very dry tinder to ignite. I've gotta get it right in the right spot. I'm getting bloody hot. No. Oh, the clouds have come back to square one. Bugger. Bloody, this cloud is giving me all sorts of dramas. As soon as we get any cloud cover, I'm no chance. My hand's moving too much, so I'm gonna try this. 
I could smell the tiniest bit of smoke as I was swapping a battery over. I think we've got a tiny ember in here. Oh, how do I set this up? No, 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 no. I've just dropped sand in there. Ah, we had the tiniest little ember in there. And I've come over and just bloody dropped sand and ruined it. The sun's not playing the game. <coughs> Far out, this is just so frustrating. Giving up on that. The sun's gone behind the clouds now. There goes our chance of starting a fire with a magnifying glass. From that day, there's been a lot of questions like, what if we didn't get to the boat? And to put quite simply, we'd need to then find hydration. We've got coconut, so we've got that sorted. Uh, the next step is we basically got to get out of there. To do that, we'd have to create a signal fire. We'd see a boat pass by maybe every couple of weeks, even sometimes up to a month without seeing anyone. So we've got hydration. We need to find food. At some point, we need to get a signal fire going. We'll have another crack later. This is a beach almond tree. So I'm gonna fill my pockets with this and go back to base camp. All right, as that tide's pushing in now, we've come around. Uh, and in these rock pools, it's a pretty good place to look for a bit of a feed. So let's see what we can find here. All along the rock pools here, there's these tiny little snails. There's not too much meat in them, but at least they're an easy feed. So I'll actually fill my pockets with these as well. Oh, no way. There's a mullet here that's live that's just beached itself. Oh, yeah. Yes. I was so lucky. Oh, the way's going to get him. No, he's mine. Just give him a bit of a tap here. Put him out of his misery. All right, I cannot believe that. We've just got so lucky there. Let's just return him back to camp. Look at this, right out the front is a big total. Oh. oh. Oh no. Oh no, what's happened? Oh, this. Holy moly. This. Something has eaten this turtle. Oh no, I thought this was a, a big friendly turtle that's come to say hello. But the sharks have eaten. Look at the teeth marks here. Holy guys. This would have been a tiger shark. It's the only shark around here that's big enough to, to have a go at these turtles. Oh, that's so sad, but kind of nerve wracking because this is one of the areas where, you know, if I had a mask, I'd be going swimming straight out here looking for a feed. Somewhat successful hunting and gathering mission. Fair bit more luck than anything else with that, but we do have uh, sort of just enough for a bit of a feed tonight. You know what, that afternoon sun is really uh, poking its head through now that the clouds are pissed off. I might have another go with this fire. Let's move these across to the sun. Oh yeah, this is pretty good here. Trying to make a way for this light bulb to stay still without relying on my hand. Oh, you know what? I think I've done it, guys. Look at this. I'm gonna call this one the angler fish if it works. It's probably been about 10 minutes. A little bit of coconut husk there is turning, turning black, so it's getting a fair bit of heat there. But so am I, to be honest. So I'm gonna have a coconut to drink. It's gonna be a beautiful little afternoon here. We've got um, a fair bit of shade on the front beach, which is beautiful. And that tide's coming in, which is nice as well. Just need to get a bloody fire started. Looking for a little clamshell like this to boil those snails in. Uh, ideally a bit bigger, but this could work. Holy sh- We're on, we're on, we're on, we're on. We're on, we're on, we're on, we're on, we're on. We're on, we're on, the anglerfish. The mighty anglerfish. Get in there, mate. The mighty angler. Yeah, baby! <laughs> you beautiful thing! Oh, yes! Yes, yes, yes! 
go, you good thing. The angler fish has come good. Phew. I come back and the angler had her up and smoking. You beauty. Gotta get some more wood for him. Oh, I don't know how much of that I got. I come and as I click record, I knock the camera over. Better take that off before we light anything else on fire. The game plan is now to not have to do that again. So let's kind of stoke this fire up so it just keeps on burning. Just looking for a bit of decent timber. Uh, there's a few bits and pieces here. Now this timber should keep going for a little bit longer than the, the stuff washed in from the ocean. And this one's gonna be the all-nighter. Things are starting to come together. Gonna give these a bit of a wash. Next thing, these coconuts, the dark ones, these are the good eating ones, but they're pretty tricky to get open. Actually, they're quite difficult to get open, but I'm gonna try and make something which makes life a little bit easier to open these guys up. That's probably sharp enough. Oh, here we go. This is gonna be entree once we open it up. Oh no. My fire's gone out again, not again. Don't make me get the anglerfish onto you. We're gonna need some of this. Oh no, rule number one was to not let the fire go out. But generally, if you've got smoke, you're a good chance of getting it back. Put all that on top of that. Give it a minute. We're back. <laughs> Here we go. We're gonna need one very select leaf that's gonna be our, um, I guess our blanket you could call it. This one looks prime actually. A lot of animals like the bowerbird um, will actually use their, their nest making skills to attract a mate. And the one with the best nest gets, uh, gets a mate. And I think Fran will be happy to know I won't be attracting any mates out here, but it is pretty important um, just to have something to sleep on to get off the sand. Anyone who's tried sleeping on the sand, it seems like a great idea. Till about the middle of the night, you actually get cold. You get really cold. Um, so this is gonna go between me and the sand. Put it into our little hut, see how it fits. All right, I'm gonna go for a bit of a walk along the beach, see if there's anything else that we can pick up to add to this um, add to this dinner. Probably got about 45 minutes until the sun sets, we'll come back for a bit of a cook up. The snails are trying to make a getaway. We lost one? Now this is that big dead turtle that's washed down the beach a bit further. I'm expecting to see like a big fin following it, like a tiger shark or something like that. But that would be putting out some serious smell that the sharks love. Looks like they've got most of the good parts. It's amazing how strong the shell is. Oh no! Oh, that was gonna be dinner. I thought that was my chance. I've been waiting all day for that. I'm gonna need this and this one. All right, I'm gonna start going with dinner now. Entree. We're gonna have coconut to eat. Beautiful eating coconut. That's gonna be one part of the entree. The other part is these beach almonds. We'll crack these open. These were an absolute favorite growing up in Papua New Guinea, Tullus. Yeah, we used to get into these every morning tea and lunch at school. They're great. You want to tack them with a rock and just crack them like that. And that's, that's the almond. Hmm. Tasty little bugger. And the game plan would be just to wait until a boat went past. We'd then get these green palms straight on top of this fire and that would just send out an almighty smoke signal 
cross our fingers that they saw it and came in. And that's really all we can do. So on tray, we've got a couple of almonds I've been stacking on the go there. Coconut. We've got the fish. We've got the snails. I'm gonna have a little bit of a snack and then I'll, I'll get this mullet on. I wanna cook while it's still light. These mullet have um, a fair bit of stuff in their gut, so I'll take it out. This one is a diamond scale mullet. Tell by the yellow tail, they're the best eating of the mullets and they do actually get the biggest. There's one problem with our little clamshell is that it doesn't hold water, it all leaks out the bottom. So there's an old Coca-Cola can here on the beach that I'm gonna, I'm gonna use to, um, to boil them up in. That should do. All right, I want to keep a bit of a fire going at the back here and then drag some coals forward so we can cook up the front. It's pretty special. Let's get that fish on there. And these guys should just boil. There. Woo! All right, let's see how that goes. Got this little period of happy hour now where we've got everything we need. We've got fire, got food, got shelter, got water or coconuts. And it's not too hot, it's just bloody beautiful. I'm gonna enjoy this. Oh, see they're boiling now, that's what we want. They would be done. I'll just flip this. Oh, of course that's hot. All right, time to serve up. Nice. That's pretty hot. Dinner is served. Mullet, snails, and coconut and beach almonds. All right, to get into these snails, a knife, and I'll just pull out like that. It is sort of like a little bite-sized pistachio type setup. Tasty though. Mm. Yeah, nice. Feeling away nicely. Oh yeah, there we go. We're just gonna have to let it cool down for a sec. Pretty good meat on these mullets. I've got to say, the first day's been a success. We did get very lucky with uh, one of those mullet literally jumping out of the water and beaching itself. Uh, I'll have to hone my hand spear technique more tomorrow, but while the days can be, can be challenging, the night times when you're out camping like this seem to go for twice as long. Yeah, I hope tonight goes all right. I'm exhausted, so I'm gonna stoke this fire up and do my best to get a bit of sleep. That is just the most beautiful full moon rise out there. Oh wow, what a moment. Uh, three coconuts just wasn't anywhere near enough yesterday. I've got a splitting headache. Feels like a, a horse has just kicked me right there. But the strangest thing happened last night and oh, I haven't been spooked like this since I was a kid. This is gonna get giving me goof, goosebumps thinking about it. I was lying down here like this and I had this blanket over the top of me like this, filming a night lapse there of the um, of the full moon rising. And as I was just kind of dozing off a little bit, I could hear all these noises, but there's always noises happening like hermit crabs and like rats in the bush. But there's a, a noise of something like bigger than both of these things. And, and I, I just felt like, oh, someone's just, someone's just arrived behind me, like a, a presence. I was like, no, Jake, don't, don't, don't be silly. No one, no one could be there. It's just, um, hermit crabs or something so i just kind of dozed off no joke like this is this is so, someone grabbed me there right right there i just felt this hand not aggressively but to to like to wake me up and i was i wasn't like that and of course there's no one no one no one around and then i was trying to rationalize it to myself maybe that was just like a, a bit of a, a cramp, twitch or something on my in the muscle there, and I was like, nah, I know, I know what I felt. There's no way that was a, a twitch or something. So from there, oh man, I was I was scared stiff. Hey, I, I haven't been like that since I was a kid. Like that was that was crazy. Good news is now the ghost has let me out of a, of a bit of a sleep, and we've got a big day ahead of us. But first things first, I'm gonna drink sort of like two or three of these coconuts just to try and. Try and get my fluids up. What an amazing day. I'm gonna go for a swim to wake up and I hope whatever ate that turtle yesterday isn't hungry this morning. All the bonefish out the front seem to be a bit spooked this morning. Unless if one literally jumps up on the beach and beaches itself, I think they're probably safe. So we're gonna actually go exploring further afield today. The school is something smaller coming here. Little bait fish. 
So on that day where the boat went adrift, we were actually looking for mud crabs in an area kind of similar to this. So let's have a bit of a walk around here in search of a mud crab. Oh, here's a big hole. I didn't take long. I'm just having a tap around with the end of the spear. And if there's a big crab in there, he'll latch on and let me know about it pretty quickly. No one home there, but we'll keep having a look around here. The sun's just reflecting off this little basin here and it's seriously hot at the moment, so I don't want to spend too, too much time here, but I'll just go around the corner and see if there's any mud crab holes. Turtle here that's succumbed to the heat. It's kind of an eerie location when it's low tide like this. It's just skeletons on the flats and that's kind of the only real sign of life. Shell of a crab. So the game plan with these holes is I just want to tap around um, and hopefully feel or hear a crab and then I'll kind of know where he's sitting and I can get in there and try to get him out. But I'm coming up with nothing in this one. Little drain here, sometimes the crabs sit in this through the low tide um, and then when the tide comes in they use these to, to move elsewhere and feed. It's hard to know when to go back, like when you're using more energy than what is actually productive, when you're becoming more dehydrated than, than what you should be, but this bay here looks likely. Water's like boiling here with um, really little fish. Maybe that's a good sign. There's a bit of good timber around here, which are a likely spot for a mud crab. At least there's signs of pippies here. This would be a they are far more substantial meal than what I had last night. Oh man, it's hot. Beautiful, but hot, very hot. Oh, it's probably a first sign of a living crab. Hello, mate. Don't worry, I'm not gonna eat you, mate. I'm not. Little ghost crab. They're not really worth the effort, those ones. There's nothing really on them. There's potentially a hole way out there in the middle of the, the muddy bay. Uh, let's go have a look. There was the faintest little noise that hurt. It almost sounded like a bit of a crab. There's a tiny shell of what once was a crab. Might be a bigger one in here though. Oi. Nothing worth our time in that one. I'm starting to think this might have been a bad idea. Oh, geez, I'm cooking. These holes here, like the divots, they could be left by, we're hoping, mud crabs, but a range of other things, like even a turtle lying here, uh, or stingrays digging around. So, yeah, we'll try our luck. This looks like our best chance yet, and probably our last chance. Is that a crab mound, you reckon? Oh, the hole's too small. I'll give up. I'm gonna go find some cleaner water. This is, this is no good here. Oh, it's nice to be in some shade. Oh, let's cut through here and go for a swim. Starting to run out of, I am starting to run out of ideas of what we're going to do for a feed. Oh. All right, we're going for a bit of a walk. We're venturing further afield to see if we can catch something a little bit more substantial with a hand spear or seeing what we can find. It's now low tide again, which is probably the best time to go hunting um, from the shore, especially with a hand spear. You can actually see everything a, a lot clearer. And up here, it gives me a good vantage point. If there were any fish below, I'd be able to get a shot at them. And I've just found a sea urchin here. I, I could eat that sea urchin, but I'm gonna try and get an upgrade. I'm gonna use that as a bit of chum in the shallows here and, and see if we can bring in any bigger fish to then, um, then get a shot at from up here. Let's see how we go. All right, I'm going to leave that urchin for five minutes and keep walking down the beach and see if there's anything else we can find, and then I'll come back. There are a couple of fish that are kind of holding up in these little sand patches at low tide. It's the only kind of deeper sections for them, so I'll walk through here and see if I can see if I can spear one. Oh. A couple of little fish came in on the urchin, but um, nothing we want. I think it is just too shallow here for any of the big ones to come through. It's like every time I feel like I've got a bit of a plan to catch something, it just hasn't worked out, but we just got to keep going. I've got to keep going. We'll get a feed eventually. There's a good sand patch here, which is a deeper hole. 
I'm hoping there's some fish holding there, but to get a better look, I'm gonna get up this tree and get a bird's eye view from them. Proven to be a lot more difficult than I thought to get a feed. Like, we just, everything I think is gonna provide a feed just um, keeps striking out. So this is the deeper sand patch where I was hoping it'd be full of fish, but unfortunately it's not. Oh, actually after a couple of minutes, I have spotted a couple of fish up here now, down in that sand patch. I'm gonna go down and give it a crack. There's a couple, there's a couple of fish. I'm gonna stalk out in the shadow of this tree, throw a little bit of bait, see if we're gonna track something in. I wanna let him get closer. Closer. He's coming on the he's coming on the bait, but I just want to get him let him get really close. Yes. Oh come on. No. No, where is he? Come here, mate, I need you. Hey, oh, he's jumping, he's jumping. Where is he? Come here, mate. Oh, he's slippery. Oh, my spear's too blunt. The sharks will be after him. Yes, yes, persistence paid off. Persistence paid off. Check that out, we got one. We finally got one. Oh man, that was tough going. But that is gonna be lunch for us. Still got a bit of smoke going from the old nighter, which is good. We'll get that going. It's gonna smoke like crazy for a bit, but generally, if there's smoke, there's potential for fire. So it has proved to be a bit more challenging than I um, would have hoped and thought to get a feed and and sort of go about day-to-day -day business out here. But with these type of survival situations, um, the statistics show if you can get through the first 24 hours, you're well on your way to surviving. You can get in a bit of a daily routine. Like the biggest thing here, uh, I've got to keep hydration. There we go, we've got fire. Got to keep hydration, got to keep that fire going once you get it started. And then basically the food can come and go. It's not as important. And the whole get out plan for me is when I see that passing vessel, I'm going to throw the entire hut on and create a hat, one hell of a smoke signal. All right, I'm going to get into these coconuts, guys. Get hydrated. That bonefish is going straight on the fire. But that's it for the episode, guys. Thanks so much for coming along for the ride. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're new here, subscribe. We'll see you next time. And hopefully, I don't have to do this one for real for quite some time. <laughs>